Hey guys, I am making a big batch of fire cider this morning. I have huge garlic cloves, so it says 15 garlic cloves, but these are massive. So I'm doing like 11, 10 maybe. And we're about to do math. Excuse the waltzing math you see music in the background. <laughs> so we've got fresh garlic as well. One whole lemon. If you can get organic, Um, so, apple cider vinegar, of course, honey, of course, garlic, ginger, of course, a whole organic lemon, um, turmeric powder, of course, and water. And you'll need a 16 ounce jar. And there's actually a little olive oil in this as well, because the fat helps your body to absorb all this nutrients. So... We're gonna make this, trying to stay ahead of sickness because the longer it's in the fridge, the more potent it gets. So the stronger and more effective it is. So I wanna make it now so we have it on hand when we need it. Don't wait till you're sick to make this, if you can help it. Obviously, it'll still be beneficial if you make it when you're sick and you use it that same day. But if you have it in the fridge already, getting potent and more strong, it'll be better. So first thing we're doing is adding all these garlic cloves straight into the blender. I'm not going to do much uh, grating because I've got frozen ginger, so I'm just gonna cut it into smaller chunks, kind of like hammer it into smaller chunks because it's frozen right now, and put it straight into the blender along with, I'll probably quarter this lemon, put it, the whole thing straight into the blender, and then the turmeric, olive oil, apple cider vinegar, honey, and water. Let's do it. I get my organic garlic and ginger root from Azure Standard in bulk. So the garlic, I get like a pound and I don't need to freeze it, but I do freeze my ginger root um, because I don't go through it very fast. So I think it's already starting to get soft. So it's not that hard to cut. I am keeping the peel on it just because I don't feel like peeling it or waiting for it to be fully thawed. So I think this is probably enough. Straight into the blender with the garlic cloves. The lemon, I'm just gonna cut the little stem off, but I'm gonna put this whole thing in there. Even with the seeds, yes, kind of crazy. And I don't have like a ninja blender, so I do have to probably cut it into smaller pieces than if I had one of those $500 awesome blenders. Then, that's the, the main bulky content, content. Now we're gonna add the turmeric, olive oil, apple cider vinegar, honey, and water. water right i got the garlic the lemon the turmeric the ginger the honey olive oil apple cider vinegar one cup of water there are so many fire cider recipes i think they're all awesome i really think it just boils down to which one can you handle as far as flavor goes I cannot handle the ones with cayenne pepper. They literally make me gag so much that I can't take them. So as effective as they are, I can't, I don't benefit from it because I just can't handle that, that um, cayenne. So if you can, I would recommend one with cayenne or adding a little cayenne to this. It is extremely powerful and very, very good for you. Um, but this one has been 
one that I've really liked and been able to take with a lot less resistance. And my children like it. So we're going to blend that and then put it into a 16 ounce mason jar, which we will then top off with water. If it doesn't reach all the way to the top, we'll top it off with water. Pop this in the fridge. Looks like we'll need about half a cup of water to top it off. And now this, you can take a shot every day if you want, just to keep your immune system nice and strong. Or you can treat it like an antibiotic. I'm gonna put it there. And it should get more and more potent the longer it's in the fridge. And I'm sure we'll take a shot a day just for immune boosting. But then, of course, if we get sick, we'll take four to five shots a day. And um, you want to start taking it at the first sign of the slightest little tickle in your throat. This morning, I felt that. Thankfully, I have my uh, echinacea tincture that I can take. But if I didn't make tinctures and if I didn't have these on hand, then I would definitely... I, I will take a shot of that, but I'm saying I would have started on that this morning. And that's what made me think, you know, this is sixth season. I want to have good fire cider waiting for us in the fridge for whoever's next. And we've already had sickness in the house. We made some on the spot. They took some on the spot, but I really want some brewing in the fridge that is getting more and more strong. So I hope this is helpful to you guys and encourages you to go ahead and make your fire cider, get it in the fridge, let it get nice and strong and potent. I think it would last three months in the fridge. If you know better, please leave that in the comments below. I'm not 100% sure how long it lasts. Uh, it's kind of funny. It doesn't last long in my house because my husband drinks it over ice because he's crazy. But <laughs> for others that may not enjoy it that much and don't get sick and are just taking a shot a day or every other day, it may, you know, you may be curious to know what's the expiration on this. So if anybody knows, please share. Uh, and this is great for stuff that you can easily have on hand and make yourself at any given time versus getting into the whole world of herbs and tinctures, which I love and I'm super excited about, but not for everybody. You know, not everybody wants to do that, but I will tell you guys, I just bought some herbs to make some new tinctures. I just need to go to the alcoholic store. What do you call it? The alcoholic store. <laughs> me the uh, I don't know where you buy liquor I have no idea what it's called the liquor store the liquor store I need to go to the liquor store and get some oh my goodness and get some vodka some 100 proof or 80 80 to 100 proof vodka to steep my herbs in but I got some marshmallow leaf I think it's marshmallow but it says marshmallow marshmallow leaf I got some licorice root licorice root I got some mullen and I got some lobelia. And lastly, I got some, some thyme. Even though I have thyme in my garden, it's done growing. And I wanted to make some more thyme syrup and more thyme tincture because it was so effective. So I'm gonna be making some cough tinctures, respiratory tinctures with these. Yeah, that's why I got these, for respiratory and cough tinctures. And then I still have my echinacea root in the bottom cabinet here. It is so uh, nasty looking, but this stuff is the best, best, best for viral infections and immune boosting. It's just incredible. So that's what I got going on here with all my concoctions. I need to make it to the liquor store. And I did buy some vegetable glycerin just to make the tinctures taste a little less disgusting, especially for my children. The good thing about the alcohol tinctures though, is that we drink a lot of tea. And so when I make a cup of tea, I can just put a few drops of the tincture 
in the tea and the alcohol evaporates and what's left is the con concentrated herbs. So my kids get it. But if we don't make tea, then just taking them straight is very nasty and I don't want to be just giving them vodka. So the vegetable glycerin really helps and first of all, it tastes better and it's not such a strong alcohol content for the children. And even though it's not as strong taste-wise, it is as potent and it is as effective. So um, I'm going to try that and see how it goes. So that's all I have for you guys today. Make yourself some fire cider, beat those colds before they start and take care of yourselves this cold and flu season. God bless you guys. See you next time.